guys welcome to this week's how to tuesday um we are first of all i have to say i'm having so much fun being as abstract as i possibly can i feel like each lesson i break it down even more simplistic and new techniques and i'm i'm you guys i'm taking you on this journey but i'm taking myself on this journey too because this is something that i've wanted to do for a very very long time and i guess finally feel like i have the confidence to do so so um which means when I say I have the confidence to do so, which means that I've really, really practiced and honed my skills on placement of features, because this is basically mostly portrait art. So on, sorry, I'm a little out of breath because I was chasing my kitten because <laughs> I'm trying to film. I've been up for over an hour, get up early so the house is quiet and the cat is just all over the place. So I just handed him off to my daughter <laughs> because I can't focus. Okay, so back to what I was saying. Um, I feel like I've spent, oh gosh, 30 plus years honing and practicing and learning portrait work and all different styles and placement. But the, what I'm getting at is at the basics. I've learned the basics and I practice them to death. Will I stop practicing them? Absolutely not because things do, you know, it's like a muscle memory. You got to keep it going. You got to keep that muscle built. So you can take breaks, but if you want to keep it, you got to come back to it. So I feel like I have done really good job and a lot of you have too. Um, I know I do have beginner followers and stuff, and this is perfect for that as well because it's not as, um, it doesn't have to be as perfect. It gets to be freeing. It gets to be um, uh, enjoyable. It gets to be just like you get to throw your character and personality in there. You don't have to be, it's not a carbon copy of something else. So I think that's super exciting, super, super exciting. And if you are new to portrait work, you can you know, go onto YouTube. I have videos myself. You can go onto YouTube and learn the placement of features and then go from there. Okay. It's kind of cool because like I said, I've spent a long time honing those skills, but also if you're a new person coming in, you don't have, you have, you instantly create your own language. You instantly create your own style and dialect by, um, what it is that you're like, w there's no one telling like, you don't have like this whole repertoire behind you of all the different skills. You can kind of just start fresh and go from there. If you're interested, super interested in abstract work. Now I say abstract and people look at it and they're like, Oh, that's so easy. It's this it's just slap on some colors, but it's not easy. Actually, it takes some skill. Um, which is why I keep presenting these videos to people because it's, I, I am so in love with it. And I'm, the feedback I'm getting is that the group, my group on next gen and on YouTube and on Instagram, they're loving it too. So I'm just going to keep riding this train and, um, I hope you stay with me. I hope you have fun. It's, I think it's a beginner. It's for beginner and for somebody who's a novice, truthfully. Um, there's different skill levels because obviously there's certain, you know, the novices practice a lot longer. Um, but it doesn't mean that the beginner can't also, you know, it's just like, it's kind of a clean slate. You just go for it as opposed to listening to all the stuff that you've learned. And then the flip side, listening to all the stuff that you've learned also aids you in just going for it. So like I said, it's for both. So enjoy. I just want to go over really quick. Um, the supplies, <clears throat> I got some new paints. I just discovered this paint. I was watching a tutorial or something the other day. It's called reflex rose. I'm a love, I love, love, love neon pink, neon pink. I wasn't, didn't grow up a girl who loved neon pink. I have turned into a girl who loves neon pink. I have always loved this and I've always loved this. But that's what this looks like right here. This one, I tested it. Now that's on toned paper, but it's not that much different than white. And it's pretty solid. So I'm digging it. I'm super excited. And a little goes a long way. So I'm just going to grab, you can grab whatever colors you want. Just two or three. We're not going to go crazy because it's not a super heavy painted. painted. It's actually going to lean more towards um, charcoal. I have my Generals Extra Soft. Or my, actually, my Generals Charcoal 4B Soft. And then my Generals Charcoal, uh, is this extra? And then my four or 6B, Generals Charcoal 6B Extra Soft. And then I have my white General's Charcoal Pencil. A couple bigger brushes. Uh, I'm going to use this as my palette. I brought it to show you. I just, you know, these are coming in the mail all the time now. So I just cut it up and I'm going to use it as my palette. And my substrate is going to be Fabriano Hot Press 140 pound. I cut one sheet 9 by 12 in half. I thought it would be fun to do two. This should be fairly quick or not. We'll see. Um, this is more like a a study. We're going to do a study on how to just lay down color quick and throw out some um, sketches. You could open up a journal and pick five pages and just do what we're going to do or do something like this. You could cut these into fours and make them smaller and play. You could just do one. It's up to you, but this is more of a study 
on working without thinking too much. Lately, I've noticed a lot of people saying that they're getting stuck in their head. They're like, they really, really want to play. Um, they really want to, you know, do abstract or it's just not in their wheelhouse or um, it's because you're stuck in your head. You're thinking too much. And I've told all the people that have said this, you know, like my last le my video is very quick very non-blended, which I totally was terrified to do, and I absolutely loved it when I was finished. I've already done another piece like it. I just, I'm, I love it so much, which kind of led me to this. It's not quite as similar, but it's very free. So what I've told those that are like, it's not, I'm just not used to, it's not comfortable, I don't really dig it, switch to your non-dominant hand. For me, that's my left hand. Switch to your non-dominant. If you find too much chatter going on in your head, okay, first of all, you're attracted to do the lesson. Okay, the teacher in me is kicking in right now big time. <laughs> first of all, you're attracted to the lesson. You're attracted to the prompt. You went, oh my gosh, I want to do this. You saw the video. You said, oh my gosh, I want to do this. You sat down. You got all your stuff. You started to do it, and you're like, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. It's because your the right side, your, the, the, the analytical side of your brain, the survivor side of your brain is going, well, this isn't normal. This isn't what you do. This isn't how you work. This is a bit that you're not going to be successful, blah, 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 blah. You need to shut that off. Okay. We all go there. The easiest and quickest way to shut it off is to work with your non-dominant hand. You do not have time. If you're working with your non-dominant hand, you do not have time to have that chatter in your head. You just go for it because you're so focused on working with something that's not used to being worked with. And it's just as successful and it's just as freeing. So you gotta give yourself a chance. Okay. If you already know that you're that type of person, don't even start with your dominant hand. Go straight in with your non-dominant. Bottom line, as always, I want you guys to have fun. Okay, please have fun. Please experience it. Please practice it. If you've never done it before, but you were kind of like, eh, maybe, just do it. Just do it. It's not going to hurt anything. Remember, it's just art supplies. It's just paper, just paint, just chalk. It's nothing. It's not. It's just something to get your voice out, to get whatever's going on. And get it out on paper and let it go. Okay, you guys? Have fun, have faith, all right? And we're gonna play. And then I also grabbed um, my Carbothellos. I'm not gonna go crazy. I want. I pulled them all because they're all together, but if I'm gonna do this, I'm thinking I'm gonna lay color down, a couple colors down, nothing crazy, dry it with my heat gun, and then I'm gonna come in with one color, maybe, maybe two, which could be the white that I used to highlight or one of the colors, but I'm gonna do the whole portrait in one color. Super fast and sketchy. Now, for me, sketchy means I hold the end of the pencil. I don't go up close. So I don't choke up close to the top because this is super controlled. I don't want super controlled today. I'm going to pull it back here and I'm going to draw at the holding the end of the pencil. And I also might twist it as I go to get the free um, lines, to get those free movement lines, like almost like childlike. I really like to kind of go back to childlike style and behavior when I'm working, when I, especially when I do abstract. I just find it so freeing. I just love it so much. And I hope you guys do too. I hope you're learning too. And if you've already, you know, you're elbow deep in it like I am, yay, hallelujah, okay? So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm not gonna do a ton of color. <laughs> I say that now. I'm really gonna try to refrain because we all know this girl likes color. So, but I'm gonna try to keep it to one, maybe two colors and then whatever paints I put down. All right, you guys. I'm also going to use the, 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 I'm going to use maybe, I don't know, maybe I, I was going to use a paintbrush, but I might use a scraper. Oop. And this is just half an old gift card, you know. Um, you could also use, like if you have these, these I found these in the, on the Amazon, they're pastry tools. I mean, they have paint ones too, but these, I just like, they were cheaper and I was like, cool. I use this one a lot because it's fun to just scrape. It does a whole nother effect on the paper when you pick up paint and you scrape it in. First of all, it dries super quick, but it does like, um, it gives you a little bit of transparency of the paper underneath. It, it's not such a solid color that a paintbrush would give you. And this, this does the same thing. So, you know, have fun, play, experiment. I'm all about the experiment. Okay, you guys, experiment. If I don't say something here, as always, if you guys want to take it further and go somewhere else with it, uh, add, you can add more colors. You can add another fate. You can, whatever you want to do, go for it. If this is just a, a, I always imply or intend my work to be a jumping off point and then open up the Pandora's box and you go for it and just play. Okay. Bottom line, you're supposed to have fun. All right. Okay. So if you like what you're seeing and you're enjoying the How To Tuesdays, please like and subscribe. Click that bell so you get personal notifications every time I drop a video. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much for being here, you guys. Also, join me over at Next Generation Art um, on Facebook. It's my private art group, and we would love to have you. Okay, so let's get started.
Okay, guys, <clears throat> I finished. And I kind of love it a lot. I love it a lot. You saw that I introduced like two more colors. I had the white and the black, and then I threw in the minty, this this color, which is 545. It's one of my favorite, favorite on Carbothello. And then this is another, which is 365. It's that magenta pinky color on this one. And then I did black and white on this, and then I added um, 215 for the orange, and then 311 for this, like, it's kind of a corally red. And then the black graph, or the black charcoal, and the white charcoal. <laughs> <clears throat> and that's it. Did you see why I said you could do multiple ones? Because you can just keep going and going and going. And going. I mean, just a few. Look at how cool the scent, the face is, where you captured the 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 swipe. Like, had I done it down here, it would be a whole different thing. If I'd done it up here, it would be more in the neck and not in the face. But this is magic. What's happening right here? And that was just a few swipes of paint with a, an old uh, gift card. That's it. But this, it was already done for me. I didn't even have to do all that fun little mottled um, texture in the background. Same for here. Same idea. And it's okay. I don't know if you're like, oh my gosh, don't freak out. You know, don't cover up what's... It's totally fine because it uh, adds to it. I'm all about the layers. You, I'm sure I've heard this at this point, And I would hope that you're all about the layers too. This is definitely a journal piece. Definitely just a straight up, you know, piece of uh, watercolor paper. It can be done on you know, newsprint, it could be done on cardstock, it can be done, just if you do it on cardstock, don't make it super wet, it should be okay. Cardstock is a little, it's thicker, but it's not meant to hold so much water, so just keep it very dry, like I did, and then you should be fine. Um, and it'll, the charcoal will work fine on cardstock, it works fine on watercolor paper. I've had a lot of you also ask, just really quick, kind of relating to the charcoal, or to the chalk and the charcoal and stuff. Um, I use watercolor paper, and I use, um, if I don't want to use my pastel mat or my sanded UART or UART sanded pastel paper, pastel mat's pricier. I use it very sparingly because I don't want to have to spend so much money on it. Sanded UART paper is the next step down. I use that one a lot. I really, really like it. And they have several different grits. The, the finer the grit, the less dust you have. Yay! Totally love it. If you are somebody who is sensitive to dust and charcoal and, and pastel and that kind of stuff, but you really want to play with this, just make sure to wear a mask because... Um, in, so you don't sneeze and cough and all that kind of stuff. Um, you could also wear gloves. It totally works. It's just as fine. Works is just as good. And um, or uh, if I use watercolor paper for my charcoal and my uh, pan pastels and that kind of stuff, I either cover it with gesso. You could do a color gesso or a clear gesso, or you could do um, chalk paints. Chalk paint works really really well. Chalk and pastel and charcoal all work really well when the paper has a tooth. Okay, so just remember that the paper has to have some kind of tooth. Um, I would say go out and experiment and play if you don't want to spend the money on the U sanded paper or the pastel mat. Find some sturdier paper, whatever it is, it could be mixed media paper, it could be, you know, artboard, it could be anything, and then play with it. Like do patches of different gessos and chalk, pa chalk paint and see how it works, okay? That's, I could tell you in fine detail how everything works, you just, you won't know until you actually do it. Alright you guys? Thank you so much for being here. This was so fun. It's so happy and bright and joyful. I think I might keep doing this. All right, guys. Um, I'll see you next week. Thanks for being here. Bye.